This activity is the first of several that will use this motor position uh, control system with this open loop transfer function um, to, with a goal of designing a controller uh, that achieves a step response that has less than 10% overshoot and a rise time of less than 0.5 seconds. And so what we're going to do is we're going to incrementally, as we look at each controller type, we're going to incrementally uh, try using that approach, using that controller uh, on this system to achieve these design uh, criteria. And so we're gonna see which ones work and which ones don't and what, uh, what kind of knobs of flexibility we get with each one. So in this case, we're gonna look at um, proportional control. Um, and so uh, that is essentially um, just a constant value. And so I'm putting in one here because uh, in this activity, you'll use uh, this new tool in MATLAB that we'll introduce, which is the RL tool. And, um, and so in this case, what you're going to do is call RL tool, and you're going to give it the transfer function of the system, and then you the open loop system, and then you give it the nominal structure of the controller of the, um, of the controller transfer function. And so in this case, we're just going to pass it in a number of value of one because it will allow us to add in a gain uh, and move that gain around uh, within the RL tool. And so the big question here is whether proportional control is good enough to meet our specifications. And so what I'd like you to do, uh, I will show you some, some tricks uh, to, um, to actually look at the um, overshoot and rise time and the rest of the time domain specifications uh, quite nicely within the RL tool. But what I'd like you to do is to first identify what are the corresponding um, values or constraints that we have on variables like omega n, the real value, and the damping ratio uh, based on these time domain specifications. So you should be able to calculate these by hand, but I will also show you a way of plotting them very nicely within the RL tool. So go ahead and give this a shot um, and try to evaluate um, using uh, both your understanding of the root locus, the knowledge of the geometric structure, uh, the geometries of the structure and the complex plane of these time domain specs, as well as this new, new RL tool uh, that you can use uh, to investigate this. Before we jump into the using the RL tool to solve this problem, um, essentially this motor position control with a proportional controller, um, it's useful to go ahead and stop and calculate out the geometries that we're expecting um, and understand kind of how these, to my, the, these uh, time domain specifications are related. And so if we were to go through the calculation that we did on the previous slides to figure out an overshoot value of 10%, corresponds to a zeta value that goes like um, that is greater than 0.6 and so if you were to take the inverse sine of that 0.6 that gives us an angle of about 37 degrees and so what that means is is that the closed loop poles that achieve an overshoot of less than 10 percent are ones that have an angle greater than 37 and so that's going to describe this cone that's being made in uh, the complex plane. Uh, so if we take a look at our rise time uh, criterion that says that we need to be less than 0.5 seconds, we do the calculation here that tells us that our distance away from the origin of these closed loop poles needs to be greater than 3.6. So if we just make a sketch uh, of what this root locus looks like for this uh, open loop uh, transfer function and a constant uh, proportional controller, then that looks like uh, what we have here. So we've seen this particular example a couple of times. So keep in mind this open loop pole is at minus one, this open loop pole is at zero. So when the gain is very small, uh, not very, hasn't moved these poles very far, then that means that the distance from the origin to the first pole is actually quite small. And so that's not going to achieve this time domain spec on rise time. So we're going to need to increase that. And so what we notice is that this, this time domain spec says that the, the distance from the origin needs to be 3.6. So that means that we have to go out to 
um, this would be about minus 3, so minus 3.6, we need to go out to a radius of about this distance from the origin in order to achieve this rise time spec. And so that means that nothing along this segment of the root locus is going to achieve that. And so that means that we're going to need to be out, essentially follow this root locus up and down and increase the gain until these poles essentially cross over into this section beyond this radius of 3.6. Um, the problem with that is that that creates an angle. So notice that the angle, that's going to be a bad line there, but this angle right here is getting this angle here between the vertical and this, um, and this cone as we move this pole higher and higher, go higher and higher here. Once we get here, this angle is getting smaller. So this is the angle theta. And we said this angle needs to be greater than or equal to 37 degrees in order for our um, overshoot criteria to be satisfied. And so what we're seeing here is that this sketch right here is not showing us whether or not it's possible, but what it's showing us is that there is a trade-off between achieving our overshoot and achieving our rise time specs. So by making a better rise time, we inherently make a worse overshoot and vice versa. And so what we're gonna see is there's a bit of a battle here between achieving these and ultimately, as I'm kind of spoiler alert with this, uh, with this slide, but we're not going to be able to find a gain that is going to be able to achieve both of these um, because proportional control is not um, a sophisticated enough controller in order to compensate for the dynamics of the system and achieve both of these specifications at the same time. So now let's go ahead and jump into the RL tool. All right, to take a look at this example, uh, we're gonna go ahead and use the RL tool. We'll create our S variable and then uh, put in our plant transfer function. And in this case, we're using proportional control. So we'll just put in a constant value of one. And so when we hit enter, that loads up the, uh, the RL tool and you move it around so that you get to the point where you You've got the root locus on the left and the step response on the right. And this again is for a compens uh, the, your controller or compensator, just the gain value of being one. And so what we can do is we are interested in our overshoot value. So we'll go ahead and um, get out our peak response. And right now at this, at this particular gain value, we have an overshoot of um, 16, a little over 16%. Um, we're also interested in our rise time. Our rise time right now is 1.64. So right now we're violating both of our um, constraints. We want an overshoot that's less than 10% and we want a rise time that's less than half a second. Um, and so we already know that in order to achieve less overshoot, we're gonna need to drive these closed loop poles closer to the, um, the real axis. And so uh, what we can do is we can just drag these down. And so we can see that indeed the overshoot is reducing. We're now down right there, right around 10. And so if we take a look at the gain value that we have here, we've got about 0.715. Um, and so that indicates, or right about there indicates this, the, the gain, uh, the, actually the, so in that case, the biggest gain that's going to still achieve our overshoot. If we were to continue to decrease, you see that we get even better overshoot, but at the same time, so if I stopped right here, I've got around 3.4% overshoot, which is a lot better. Um, however, you can see that our rise time is getting worse and worse. And so that we can understand because our rise time is gonna be related to uh, our our natural frequency, and that's the distance away from the origin. So if we wanted to go ahead and put those uh, design criteria into the root locus, we can go ahead and add a new one. Um, and in this case, we can add that value for the natural frequency, and we previously computed that should be 3.6 radians per second. So that creates this, this semicircle in the complex plane. Um, and if we also wanted to add the overshoot criteria. So you can either enter that in, it has a nice 
uh, overshoot criteria already, or you can enter that as a damping ratio. That's about the same. So here we said we wanted 10%. And so that gives us these. And so what you can see is, is if we were to move this back to the point, these closed loop poles back to the point where we we're right there at 10, then you can see that we're actually right there on this, on this uh, cone. So, and so that becomes the last, uh, last points that actually achieve that overshoot criteria. As soon as we go bigger than that, uh, the gain gets bigger. Now our overshoot goes beyond. And so that's, kind of indicating that we've left this feasible region. So if we wanted to match the uh, or meet the rise time criteria, we'd have to continue to increase the gain. And you can see we're getting faster and faster response. Um, and we are and we are over making a large overshoot now. So in this case, we've actually already achieved our rise time goal and so we can we can kind of dial that back a little bit more and so now if we look that's about right there again you can kind of fiddle with this as much as you want so now we've got 51 percent overshoot uh, but we are achieving our rise time goal and that corresponds to a gain value of about 5.9 and so what we're seeing now ultimately is the fact that we're going to have a hard time achieving both. In fact, it's impossible to achieve both of these, these criteria at the same time because they kind of conflict with each other and there is no way uh, with our given uh, controller architecture and given plant, uh, so it creates this root locus to eventually get our closed loop poles over into this white region. So that's the summary for uh, proportional control. And so we'll try to take a look at a more advanced controllers to see if we can modify the root locus in order to make these regions feasible. Some of you may be curious uh, why it is that these closed loop poles achieve our rise time objective but are not on the boundary that we computed using our uh, time domain specs. Um, and, and one of the ways to, to see why that might be is because, again, that assumes the second order um, transfer function that we would be dealing with. And in particular, in this case, perhaps um, including this term in the numerator. And so we don't necessarily have that term in the numerator. And so that may be a reason why these time domain specs are not matching exactly. Again, we'll use these um, kind of directionally so that we know that if we push our closed loop poles further away from the origin, the rise time um, should decrease. And so that's the, that's the intuition that we're going to use, um, knowing that a lot of these are built on this knowledge of just using second order systems, which will be approximations for systems that don't match this exactly. Now that we've seen uh, the analysis that we do in the RL tool, this slide just kind of captures and summarizes everything that we observed there, is that um, at small gains, uh, we were able to um, achieve a very nice uh, and quite large uh, damping ratio, which achieved our rise, uh, or sorry, our, which achieved our overshoot. Um, however, that inherently meant that our 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 natural frequency um, was was smaller, and so that meant that we didn't we didn't meet our rise time criteria, and so it took a long time for this to rise, but it didn't have a whole lot of overshoot. So uh, the, on the contrary, as we increase the, ga the gain, and, and the intuition here is that you're making um, the system more rigid and more stiff by increasing this gain, then it responds much quicker. And so we, we meet the rise time, and what you're kind of in the geometry we're seeing is that this meets a much larger, the distance here is much larger, and so that's going to achieve our our desired uh, rise time because our uh, that distance is larger um, but at the same time we are decreasing the angle here which means that we're doing worse in terms of our overshoot and so again this system is more stiff and so it rises quickly but then it also overshoots and it takes a longer time for it to oscillate out um, and so that's a nice summary of what we saw uh, dealing with proportional control. And now our goal is to move beyond pro proportional control to see if a, a more sophisticated controller can help us out on this problem.